fine now what will happen to the football how do it will move this is the very first question comes like so because of the the kick imparted to it it will acquire a velocity u and it starts moving then as it starts moving what are the forces the weight mg will like so because of the weight mg and this velocity it will start moving in a curved path it will move like this next question comes sir what makes it again to move like this again it will have velocity say v1 and mg so how do it should move it is going to move in a path like this once again i'll, I'll put it everything weight mg will act i and this will impart an air velocity v1 so how the path will be because of the resultant of velocity and the weight it will move in a curved path here the same thing here because of velocity and weight it will move in a curved path fine so what is this this particular dotted one this will say path of football what we are having is football so everyone now getting the idea now this will produce an acceleration what is acceleration along y axis equal to g there is no acceleration along x axis as as the when the ball is moving what are the forces the force will act only the weight will act here so definitely it will undergo retardation then it will have two components one v1x other will be v1y when it comes here it will be say v2 then here it will have velocity v3 here it will come and strike the ground with the same speed u okay now we'll analyze all these things so <coughs> what is horizontal component of velocity should remain same how much of velocity is u cos theta u sin theta what about velocity is will be u cos theta the vertical component of velocity will keep on change this will become v v1 sin theta here it will be horizontal component remains constant why horizontal component of velocity should remain constant because there is no acceleration along x axis there is no force acting on the ball along x axis along x axis there is no force acting that's why the horizontal component of velocity remains same how much everywhere will be u cos theta will be u cos theta now also u cos theta now also u cos theta so again how much we should write here this should be equal to v3x which is equal to u cos theta again finally u cos theta look at the horizontal component of velocity it remains same this is a very important part in the projectile motion then vertical component of velocity earlier it was u sin theta now it will become v1 y or v1 sin theta now here it will become zero then here it will become v3 y let me show that v3 y and again this will be u sin theta so what will happen to the <laughs> vertical component of velocity here u sin theta decreases become zero then increases so if you can see in the football so what is actually happening v1 y will be less than u sin theta v3 y less than u sin theta next you are to ask questions are like a uh, what will happen to this vertical component because of the weight mg the vertical component of the projectile will keep on increase huh? so when it moves from here to here the vertical component decreases it decreases when it moves from here is point to the point of striking it will decrease so we'll give some name this is the point of projection this particular thing will call is point this is the point of striking so what's happening to the projectile when it moves from the point of projection to the is point horizontal component remains same 
vertical component will keep on decreases then when it moves from highest point to the point of striking vertical component will keep on increase horizontal component remains constant so this is what happens in the basically projectile motion so based on that information we are writing this basic data not only will will take not only football it can be even the golf ball also so we'll write all the some data wise this is the ball golf ball this is the point of projection t equals 0 it will be here so as the ball moves when it it arrives here it will have v1 x v1 y and you have to draw a tangent that will give the to the path that will give the direction of velocity you have to draw a tangent the tangent will give the direction of velocity of the ball after some time the ball will be here it will have v2 x v2 y and v2 then at is point this will be the is point here what about the ball it will have component say v3 only horizontal component it will be there fine then after some time the ball will start descending it will have velocity v4 i'll resolve it v4x v4y this will be v5 v5x v5 and finally it will strike the ground with the same speed u okay we'll analyze all these things so what about this velocity u cos theta u cos theta horizontal component has to remain same I'll choose some other color. U sine theta. So, which component of velocity will be changing? The vertical component. So, this will keep on decrease as the ball goes ball ascends. It will keep on decrease at highest point. Here it will become zero. Here it will have maximum velocity. How much maximum velocity at the point of projection? U sine theta. Look at this one. Maximum velocity is u sine theta. Now will become v one y, v two y. Here it will become zero. Then because of weight acting, then it will start increasing v four y, v five y, and so on. And finally, it will strike the ground again with the same speed. Let's write all the data. So what we have is u sine theta greater than v one y greater than v two y. Then u sine theta greater than v five y greater than v four y. So as the ball moves <coughs> along y axis, we can discuss here uh, the speed of the vertical component keeps on decreases, becomes zero. After when it moves from point of projection to point is point, from is point to point of striking, the vertical component will keep on increase. and finally the point of striking will become equal to initial velocity what we have projected u sin theta fine what will be the horizontal component the horizontal component has to remain same because the reason for that v1x will write this v1x equal to v2x equal to v3x equal to v4x equal to v5x equal to u cos theta what is the reason for all this acceleration along x axis is zero fine the horizontal component remains same so this what happens in case of anything uh, it can be golf ball it can be a projectile motion uh, it can be stone you take a stone and project it hmm? it can be it's not only from football or some cannon if if a tank is there This is the enemy tank.
it will fire the some bomb. So how do it it will move in a parabolic path? Fine. So what is this? This will be shell, what we can call, or bomb, or missile. This will be enemy tank, and this is a ground. What makes it to move like this? It is projected with a speed u and weight mg will like because of speed. And the weight, it will move in a parabolic path. Okay, fine. So here it is projected with the speed u. Then because of the weight of the bomb, it will move in a parabolic path. This is what happens. Fine. So this is the, well, the idea. Parabolic path. So what all we are discussing, this is applicable for what? Anything, up, even you take a stone and project it. Hmm? Even you take a stone and project it. How the stone? Stone will move in a parabolic path. So sir, what is the theta where you are indicating? This is the theta. Then here also, it will have V1x, V1y, here V3. B2X, B2Y. You can this be theta. We'll assume that it is projected from the ground, not certain height. <coughs> Fine. So this is what basically a student must have the, the projectile motion and, and it'll be a parabolic path. The path will be a parabolic path. The path of the ball. So how the ball will move? Ball moves in parabolic path. Okay, fine. How the bomb will move? Again, the bomb will move in a parabolic path. Fine. So this is about one background is what you needed. Okay, let's go for this one. So something in this particular thing, I'll ask you, what is the, it, it, it lessens some maximum height, no? It is at a maximum height from the ground. Range. And that time of flight at t equal zero, we have fired the bomb. After some time t, it will come and strike the ground. So definitely, all these quantities I wanted them. So how you define the maximum height? Maximum height ascended by the projectile measured from the ground. How you define the range? The maximum horizontal distance of the point of striking from the point of projection. This is called like a point of striking. This is called like a point of projection. This is called like a IS point. So we'll define these quantities now. We'll write it. This is H. This particular distance, we'll call this as a range. And this is the time of flight. So how you define H? Maximum 